With geometry nodes, they make it pretty easy to scatter points across objects, but it took me a while to figure out how to move those points around without them just drifting away. So that's what we'll be talking about. If you want to download the file that I work on in this video, you can find that on Patreon, along with coupon codes for free Gumroad products and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. So these renders I've been showing are using free 3D models that I got from Sketchfab. I'll put links down below so you can download them if you want to. Sketchfab just so happens to be sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is a great place to buy and sell 3D models, which they have literally millions to choose from. And they make the browsing process enjoyable by letting you inspect the models in the browser so you know exactly what you're getting. You can download in multiple formats, and if you use their importing add-on, you can get models that aren't even made for Blender, which is what I did for these scenes. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Use my link in the description to check out Sketchfab. Here's a quick summary of what I'll cover. We'll start by scattering points on our object of choice, and then we'll change the position of those points with a texture. The next step is getting those moving points to snap back onto our object. After that, we'll look at different ways of generating points that will give us more control over the pattern and distribution. And I'll show how to control that with an empty. Then I'll show how to bring this effect into other blend files, and I'll use the Sketchfab importer so we can use one of their models. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender 3.0. To get started, we just need something to put our geometry nodes modifier on, so I'll use a plane for that. And then we need something to distribute our points on. So for that, I guess I'll just use like a cube. And now let's jump into geometry nodes. So I'll just go up here to create a new workspace under general geometry nodes. I like to use a matte cap, so I'll go up here, turn on matte cap, change it to this one, and I'll also turn on cavity just so we can see the edges a little better. All right, so select the plane, add a new geometry nodes modifier right here. You can see it adds a modifier. And if you want to be able to click on other things without it disappearing, you just want to select this little thumbtack thing and it'll just make it stay there. All right, so first what we're going to do is just delete this group input with X. And then I'm going to, in the outliner, just drag this cube over into here. And so we have it uh, as an object info node now. So I'm going to distribute points on this. Distribute points on faces and plug in the geometry right here. And then we can plug this into the output. And for this to work properly, we want to select relative. That way, when we move this around, everything follows. If you use original, it won't follow. And also, um, I didn't apply the scale, so that's why it looks like this. So I'll just control A to apply the scale and make sure this is set to relative. The first step is getting points, which we have. Second step would be moving them around. So let's do that with a set position. And I'll use a noise texture right there. We can just plug that directly into the offset. Um, this is what the offset is doing. It's basically just moving the points around like that. But if we use a noise texture, they'll be a little more random. Um, and if we change this to 4D, then we have this W value. And when we move that, you can see it will kind of wiggle the points around. And it'll look a little smoother if we turn the detail all the way down. And I'll also change the scale to 1. And now when we move this, you can see it's a lot smoother. It's just a like a bigger texture. Um, but I don't like how it's floating away like that. I want it to stay in the middle. So to do that, we just need a vector math node right here. I like to set this to subtract. And you can see this is controlling how far it's drifting. So we just need to change this to 0.5 to keep it in the middle like that. And if you want to control the strength, like how far these are being distorted, we can do that with another vector math node. So I'll just duplicate that. And we can change this to either multiply or scale. Scale and multiply are the same thing, except scale lets you change like all of the values with just this one float slider. Multiply gives you the option to change each axis individually. So I want this to be animated. And the easiest way to do that is to animate this W value right here. If you're using 3.0, I would recommend using a value node. And in that value node, you can type hash frame. And this will just match the frame value. So we can plug that directly into the W, but it'll go way too fast like that. So we can slow it down with a math node set to divide. And you can just, you know, let this play and turn it up until you think the, the speed looks good. And I'm just going to turn the points up a little just so we have a few more to work with. So now that we have these moving around, we want to snap it back onto the surface of this cube. So to do that, we're going to use another set position. 
So what we need is a way to look at each point and figure out like the part of the mesh that it's closest to. And we can do that with a geometry proximity node. And for the target, we're just going to use the cube. So we have this right here. And we can just plug the position into the position right here. And this is snapping to the closest face. So if we set this to points, they'll all be kind of gathered at the corners. And I don't really like the way that looks. You need a, like a much more dense mesh to make this look good. But if you set it to faces, it will be a lot smoother. And now when we press play, you can see all of these points are kind of sliding along. So this workflow is the whole idea behind this video where we're basically getting points somehow and then we're moving them around and then we're snapping them to a surface. So you might notice that these points are really smooth in the center of the faces, but when they get closer to the edge, sometimes they kind of like snap and just like teleport from one spot to another. That's just something that happens around sharp corners. So if you wanted this to look completely smooth, I would recommend using like a plane or something like that. But we could also just select this cube and smooth it out with like a subdivision surface modifier like that. And you'll see that a lot of the jittering happens around like the edges of the faces. That's just, that's the points just kind of hopping from face to face. I would say typically the smoother you get this, the less jittering you'll notice. And if you wanted to render something like this out, you would have to instance something onto the points. If you wanted to do that, you would basically just put uh, an instance, instance on points right here. And then you could plug in whatever you want, either like another cube like that. So we could just instance it onto itself like that. And you would just want to adjust the scale over here. Or you could bring in a mesh in geometry nodes if you wanted to use like a cone or something like that. You could do that. And there is this rotation output for the distribute points on faces. And you can plug that into the rotation right there. So there are other ways of getting results like this. Most of them have to do with different ways of getting points into your node tree over here. So another way of getting points into your scene is uh, we're just going to delete the distribute points on faces right here. And I'm going to bring in a mesh line and I'll just plug it in right there. And I'm also going to mute the second set position so we can actually see where all of these points are. So this is what we have right now. It's just a line that has uh, 10 vertices. And if we use a mesh to points, we can actually see the individual points right here. You know, you can move them closer together with this offset right there. And because I plug this into the first set position, you can see that it's being um, deformed by this noise texture. So instead of putting that into the offset, we can put it into the position. And basically what this is going to do is distribute points on like the noise texture itself. So if we put that in there, and zoom in, you'll see it's just kind of creating this cloud of points right here. I'll just hide this cube for now so we can actually see the points. And if we turn the count up, I'll turn it up to something like 100 and press play, you can see it's just kind of this cloud floating around. And if you want this to look a little smoother, basically all you have to do is turn this offset um, to a lower value. So we can set this to like 0.1 like that and you can see it's kind of creating almost like threads, like lines. And if we get rid of the mesh to points, you can see actually what it's doing. And this is all just based on the noise texture right here. So yeah, the more coherent you want this to be, like if you want it to be smooth lines, you just want this offset to be low. If you turn it up higher, it will start to look a little more random and jagged. Um, I don't know why this happens, but if we turn the offset up to one, you can see it will kind of like squash onto itself occasionally when it's animated. I'm not sure what causes this. It's probably just something to do with like how the noise texture is generated. If you wanted to use an offset of one meter because you like the way it looks, I usually just set it to 0.99. And for some reason that squash and stretch doesn't seem to happen as often. It doesn't like flatten on itself. But now that we have this noise cloud going, we can just turn our second set position back on to make it snap to all of these surfaces and we'll reveal our cube right there. And that is a different way of scattering points. So you can still control the scale of this cloud with this scale right here. So all you have to do is scale it up like that. All of these options work the same as they did with the other one. So you can still move it around and scale it up and down and all of that. And that will give you slightly different results. One thing that I like about this method is with this offset, when you turn it down, um, you can kind of create more like coherent patterns 
We can turn this up to something high. And now it just looks like a bunch of kind of strings floating around. And I think that's interesting. You can also use whatever texture you want in here. So if you wanted, you could use like a Voronoi or something. So I'll just replace this with a Voronoi texture. And again, I have to change this to 4D for that. And I'll plug the color into here. In a Voronoi, the edges are hard. So we have to do smooth F1 and now it will move around. I'll also change the scale to one. And if you want to see what that looks like when it's just floating around, we can just mute this again like that. And you get some some new options like um, you can change the smoothness and you can turn the randomness down. And this is just from switching to a different texture. So definitely experiment with that if you're looking for different patterns. If you want more control over where these points are snapping to, what you can do is control the noise texture with a different object like an empty. I'll just add an empty over here. So we have this separate empty now over here. Basically, all you have to do is bring in another subtract node like this. I'll just duplicate that and put it over here. And we want to use this empty to control that. So we can just drag the empty in here. And what we're going to use is the location of that empty. And we have to change this to relative like that. So this is kind of working, but it's going in the opposite direction. So I think instead of subtracting, we just need to change this to add. Now you can see it's sticking to that empty right there. If you want to be able to scale the texture up and down with the empty, all you have to do is plug this scale into the scale right here. And now you can do that. If you want to be able to rotate it, you can bring in a vector rotate right here. I'm going to change this from axis angle to Euler and plug the rotation into the rotation right here. And you can see now it's rotating, but it's not rotating from the correct center so you can plug the location into the center right there and then it should work properly i believe if you just put this before the add which is you know moving this around it might work without plugging that in let's take a look plug the rotation into the rotation yeah and now that works fine so now this gives us a little more control for when we are snapping it on. I'll just unmute that. Now you can see wherever this empty is closest, it's going to snap those points. Another thing we can do is change our snapping option up here to face. So now when we're moving this around with G, we can hold control to snap to the face of whatever object we want, like that. And now we can also scale this up and down. This is how I created that kind of like a germ spreading animation in the beginning. And if you don't want it to look stringy like that, once again, all you have to do is turn this offset value up a little higher. So to get these to rotate correctly so that they're, you know, sticking off of the faces, we need to get the normal information from this object right here, our cube. So we can use a transfer attribute for that. And we can just plug the geometry, whoop, we can plug the geometry into the target right here. And we want to bring a normal. And we want to plug this into the attribute, but you can see it's not the right color. So we need to change this to vector because our normal is a vector. So plug that into the attribute. And then we can use this attribute to plug into the rotation. It's doing something, but it's not quite right. And that is because we need an align Euler to vector. So we can plug that into the rotation. Actually, I think this goes into the vector and yeah, it looks like we need the Z rotation right there. And now these are all pointing away from the face right there. Let's see what happens when we move it around. Yeah, it's pointing away from the faces over here too. And this should work even if you smooth it out. Once again, use a transfer attribute to get the normal information from the mesh that you want to scatter the points onto. And then you can use that attribute with an align Euler to vector and use that for the rotation. So if you want to reuse this in other scenes, you can just bring in a group input and you would just want to plug this into the object right there. And that way you can choose it over on the side. Um, if you want, you can also do this with a collection like that. So I'll actually do that with a collection. That way we can scatter these points on a bunch of different objects at the same time. So I'll just delete that like this and I'll just put this cube into its own collection like that. And now all we have to do is select the geometry nodes and choose the collection we want. And uh, it seems like it doesn't work until you 
realize the instances because it kind of treats all of the objects like instances when you use this node. Uh, and once you do that, it should work fine. We could also use the group input for our empty right here. And we can change all the names by hitting N over here and going to group. We can change this to controller surface. So now all you have to do to bring this into your other files, I'll just open up a new file right here. You can just go to file append and then just find the file that you were using that has that geometry nodes modifier in it. And when you're in there, you just want to go to node tree and I have it right here. I named it noise cloud. So you can select that and I like to press fake user right here. And now all you have to do is add the objects that you want and add a geometry nodes modifier. And with this drop down right here, you can choose noise cloud and you can put it on whatever you want. So we'll put it on a torus right here and we'll move it to a different collection. And there we go. So one thing that I've been having fun playing around with is Sketchfab has this uh, importer add-on. And when you're logged in, you can just search for whatever models you want to use. So I like to look around online. I found a few cool free models that I could use. They have a lot of good ones that you can buy too if you're really into kit bashing. So I found this one building hallway. I'll just search for it here. And it's literally the first one. Like whenever I search for it, it just finds what I want really quickly. And then you can just import it. And again, I'm using this with a 3.0. So this works with this version. I haven't tested it out with other versions, but I, it seems like they have good support for stuff like this. All right, so here it is. I just want to scale this down. So all I did was put these models into a collection and now we should be able to just put this empty wherever we want and scatter these points around like that. So to make it less glitchy, basically what I did is added in a new object, which is the same dimensions as the hallway, but just a lot smoother. That way there are fewer things for these particles to attach to. And then when I rendered it, I just hit it like that. So this collection right here, this is the one that I'm targeting for my geometry nodes, as you can see in here, it says collection four, and that is this collection right here. So yeah, I just hid that when I rendered it and made sure that this is the one that you were actually seeing. All right, that's it for this one. Use my link in the description to check out Sketchfab and check my Patreon for the project file from this video. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.